When it comes to shellfish in Maine, there is no question. Lobster is king. Clams rank second, scallops third. But scallops are a significant part of the state's fishing economy. Last year, the catch was worth nearly $7 million. The scallop industry is changing, though, as fishermen become farmers. 207's Beth McAvoy went to Penobscot Bay to learn more. Scallop bags. Yeah, there's tons of little tiny scallops. Martian Brewer and his son Bob are checking on their babies this morning. We get anywhere from 1,500 to 3, 4,000 to a bag. Baby scallops, that is. Like kids, some big enough, different. You know, even though they're all the same grade. Unlike wild scallops that fishermen harvest using nets dragged along the seabed, these babies are being farmed. So how are they raised? Out of the faith, bringing them in because you can't see what you caught. After their larval stage, scallops are looking for a safe place to settle. They attach to the mesh inside these bags. Once they get bigger, they can't get out. As they grow, they graduate to bigger net bags. At 18 months old, these scallops are ready for sale. It is a big investment of time and money. Double that time and they'll be plump three-year-olds, which fetch the best price. My father fished, my grandfather fished. <laughs> Brewer has been fishing off the coast of Stonington his whole life. No clocks to find, she shaded every day. Several years ago, when the wild scallop fishery was floundering, Brewer decided to take matters into his own hands. Just looking at the way the fisheries were going, you know, because I got a history of being involved in all of them. And things, the options were getting quite limited. Instead of worrying that there's too many fishermen, maybe we'd not make more fish. In 2016, Brewer visited Japan. They're way ahead of us. Where they've been cultivating sea scallops since the 1950s. The Japanese people were real, uh, real good about sharing the knowledge. What he learned there, he's applied to his own business, Penn Bay Farmed Scallops. Even though Marston Brewer had scalloped in the traditional way for years, he wasn't afraid to try something new. Marston, for sure, has been an innovator. When you get into fish farming, it's more like hog farming on the water, and there's a big waste problem because you have to put inputs in, you know, all your feed. This, it cleans the water. You know, it just, it, it makes it better the, the shells on them, the sequester carbon in the shells. Uh, you know, it's just, a, it's the right thing to do on so many different levels. Bivalve farming is one of the most environmentally beneficial types of aquaculture. Scallops don't even need to be fed. They simply eat the phytoplankton already in the ocean. Aquaculture in general can increase biodiversity in areas. Farmed scallops may even go one step further and be helping the wild fishery. Scallops are the most charismatic of the bivalves, right? Phoebe Jekilek is the lead scientist at the Hurricane Island Center for Science and Leadership. We have thousands of scallops on these farms that are in dense populations. Um, they're near each other which increases the chance that scallop gametes, so the sperm and eggs, can actually find each other in the water column, um, therefore creating more fertilized eggs that will eventually develop into larvae. Um, and so are these farms actually, are we seeing that increased fertilization success and potential increased larval supply from farms that could enhance the wild population for our wild commercial fishery? Because the brewer's scallops stay in one place, about a three acre area that brewer leases from the state of Maine and are tested for biotoxins, they can sell them in the shell. I go into some of the finest restaurants in the country. Well, the freshness that you get when you're buying a live scallop you just can't duplicate it. <laughs> it's a whole different experience. He does think a bit out of the, outside the box, and, uh, and but at the same time thinking about what's what's sustainable and good for the community at large, whether it's the fishing community or the town of Stonington or, or the state of Maine. Tom Dime is the educational specialist at the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries. To use the old over overused phrase of, you know, that the, the fishermen are the last of the wild hunters kind of thing. I mean, some of that's true, but. But that, that, you know, making that transition from being a hunter, per se, to a farmer, you know, and thinking about the product that I catch today, you know, I'll get paid for today or this week versus something I got to invest a year or two or three in before I see any substantial return on with all the risk involved in that time frame is a totally different mindset. There are only a handful of scallop farms in the U.S., and most of them are right here in Maine, run by small fishing families like the Brewers. Fishermen are, by nature, a very innovative group of people. 
Um, they may seem a little hard and crusty and conservative on the outside, but but they usually figure out a way to solve a problem pretty quickly. One of the best parts for Marston Brewer raising sea scallops is working alongside his son, keeping up the old traditions and starting new ones. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it, it really is. You, you see a lot of people that write diaries that move here and stuff, and they'll go off and visit their kids. And, you know, in the wintertime, after about a week, the kids are like, you know, <laughs> when they're going home, you know, and this is just, they look at what we got and it's something special. Marsden Brewer even wrote a recipe book with the help of a friend from church. It has dozens of ways to cook up scallops, though most days he and his keep it simple on the boat. They steam freshly caught scallops in an old coffee pot and add nothing. He says it doesn't get any better than that. I haven't heard of steaming them in a coffee pot, but yes, they don't need much when you get them so fresh. I can remember a few years ago I had a scallop roll in Brunswick. Yeah. And I could tell, you could just tell that the scallops had just been caught that day. Yep. It was extraordinary. It was so simple. It was so simple, but wonderful. Got to keep it that way with seafood. And you know, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with scallop farming in Maine, because obviously oyster aquaculture in the state has really boomed yeah. in about the last five years or so. Yep. People talk about the Damariscotta area becoming the Napa Valley of oysters. Mm -hmm. Sounds as though scallops may be the next big thing. Yep. That fisherman ingenuity.